In many of my furnace repair videos, one of the most common comments that I get sound like this. Hey Jay, my furnace code is blinking such and such an error code. Can you tell me what that is and how I can fix it? And it just so happens that I love furnace error codes. They're amazing. They make my life so much easier. They cut down the time of troubleshooting and diagnosing by a lot. Instead of getting there and trying to narrow down the possible problems, a furnace error code right away points you in the right direction. So I'm finally making this video. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, where the furnace code is, how to read it, or where to find it, I have a video on specifically that that you could watch to find out all of that. Before I continue, I just want to say that there are timestamps on this video. I will include them in the video description. So if you don't want to watch me talk, you can just skip to the error code that you're interested in. But if you have the time, I would really suggest watching the whole video as all this information is good stuff. But in this video, I will not be covering all the error codes for one simple reason. Every single brand of furnace, they word the same error in different words. And then some brands like Lennox, the high-tech models of their furnaces, they have over a hundred error codes on them. It's just way too much to cover. Therefore, I will only be covering four of the most common furnace error codes. Now, these four, they actually encompass a whole lot more than just four scenarios. For example, if we go with a pressure switch error, if we look at this troubleshooting chart right here, all of these codes pertain to a pressure switch error code. So by me covering the pressure switch error code, I will essentially be covering all of these codes. So let's begin with common error code terminology. Two terms that you will often come across on error code charts are soft lockout and hard lockout. And there is a difference between the two. So let's take an example scenario. A soft lockout, let's say your igniter on the furnace burned out. The igniter doesn't work. If your furnace will try to ignite and fail three times in a row, your furnace will go into a soft lockout, which means that for the next three hours, it'll do absolutely nothing. And then in three hours, it'll automatically restart and try again. But most furnaces also have something called maximum allowable attempts. So after it keeps trying over and over and over like that, and it fails to start every time, it'll go into a hard lockout. And a hard lockout means that the furnace will do absolutely nothing long term. The only way to reset a hard lockout is to actually turn the power off to the unit and then turn it back on. That being said, all furnaces are different though. So if you want to know for sure how your furnace works, the only way to know for sure is to consult your installation manual of that furnace. And in that manual, it actually tells you step by step how the furnace works, what the error codes mean, and how long those lockouts on your particular furnace are. The first error code I want to cover is the most common problem I run into, and luckily, this one is actually usually the most easiest problem to fix. And what I'm talking about is the flame sensor error code. On different furnaces, this error code will be worded differently, but here are some examples of what a furnace error code would look like. Low flame current, low flame signal, flame signal gone, lost flame sense, ignition proving failure, ignition lockout, failed to sense flame, flame sensed when no flame should be present, and so on and so on. Most flame sensor error codes will be very similar to one of those phrases. If you are seeing a flame sensor error code, then there's a good chance that all you have to do is just simply clean the flame sensor rod. If you're not sure how to do that, I do have a video on how to find and clean the flame sensor on a furnace. And if cleaning the flame sensor does not do the trick, I have another video where I go deeper in to those flame sensor issues and I talk about other possibilities that could cause this error code to pop up. By the way, all these videos that I'm going to be referencing, I'm going to include them in the description of this video right here. So that's the flame sensor diagnostic code. Now let's move on to the next one. The next three are in no particular order. The next one is the igniter code. If you're seeing some kind of an igniter error code, that means that your igniter is either bad, if you have a hot surface igniter, it might have burnt out, or it's simply not getting power from the control board. And of course, the purpose of the igniter is to ignite the gas. And if the furnace is sensing that the gas is not being ignited or the flames are not coming on, it'll shut the furnace off and give you an error code that has something to do with the igniter. Now the job of shutting the furnace off if there's no flames is left up to the flame sensor. So these two are kind of related. Here are a few examples of what an igniter error code would look like on one of those diagnostic charts. It could say check igniter, ignition failure, burners failed to ignite, lockout due to failed ignition, or hot surface igniter sensed open. If you're seeing an error code that looks something like that, then there's a good chance that whatever your problem is, it has to do with the igniter. 
I have a video on how to check and replace an igniter if you need it. Moving on to the next error code and that is limit switch or rollout switch open. Even though these are two different safety switches on a furnace, on most furnaces both of them are grouped together under the same error code. The purpose of the high limit is to shut the furnace off if the furnace is overheating or getting too hot. The purpose of the flame rollout switch is to shut the furnace off if for some reason your combustion fumes are coming back out of the heat exchanger and back into the burner box. And here's a few examples of what a limit error code would look like. Limit lockout or flame rollout lockout, limit switch open, limit circuit open, open high limit device, main limit open, primary limit switch open. And once again, even though the wording is all different, it's all talking about the same thing. Usually it's the high limit switch, but like I said, on some furnaces, limit lockout may refer to either the high limit or the flame rollout. If you're seeing this error code, one of the most common reasons why that code shows up is because you have a dirty furnace filter. And the solution is really easy, just replace that filter. I have a video on how to replace a furnace filter if you need that. Even though that seems like a simple task, a lot of questions I get are related to the furnace filter. So if you have any questions in that video, I answer pretty much all the frequently asked furnace filter questions. If the filter was not the problem, there's two other good videos for you. One video is on the high limit switch stuck closed and what you could do to reopen that. And the other video is 10 reasons why a furnace can overheat. So between those two videos, you should be able to figure out why your furnace is bringing up that error code. And if it's your flame rollout switch that is causing that error code, that usually signifies a bigger problem. I have a video about the flame rollout switch where I explain that in detail, why it's a problem and what's causing it. Oftentimes this is followed up by furnace replacement. But let's move on to the last error code, which also happens to be the issue that I least like to work on. And that is the pressure switch code. The pressure switch is another safety switch and its purpose is to shut the furnace off if there is something wrong with the combustion fumes. So if for some reason the furnace is not exhausting properly, the pressure switch will shut the furnace off. On a diagnostic chart, the pressure switch code will sound something like this. Pressure switch open, pressure switch failed closed, pressure switch error, pressure switch stuck closed, or pressure switch stuck open. And if you have a two-stage furnace, it could say high stage pressure switch or low pressure switch or high pressure switch to indicate the difference between the low stage pressure switch and the high stage pressure switch because those furnaces do have two of them. If you're seeing this error code, there is a variety of possible problems that could cause it to pop out. I have a very good video on this on 10 pressure switch problems and solutions. I also have another video on how to check and troubleshoot a pressure switch and another video on how to bypass a pressure switch for testing purposes. And that is it. Those are the most common furnace error codes that I run into. Hopefully you got some good furnace error code info out of this video. And if you have anything to say about what you just saw in this video, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and I'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, let me share something interesting with you that I learned recently. So if a cop pulls you over, the questions that they ask you right off the bat are actually very intentional. Usually they will ask you something that goes like, are you in a hurry? Or do you know how fast you are going? Do you know what the speed limit is? And if you answer that question incorrectly, you're almost guaranteed to get a speeding ticket. For example, if they ask you if you're in a hurry and you say yes, that means you're admitting to intentionally speeding. Or if they ask you what the speed limit is and you say it's 40, whereas you were going 60, then once again, you're essentially confessing that you were speeding on purpose. So next time you're pulled over and you weren't intentionally speeding, do keep that in mind and pay attention to what you say.